today we are going to cruise through Pearl City. I know Derek's done a video before, but today I wanted to talk a little bit about real estate, a little bit about condos, single family houses here. I also just kind of want to talk a little bit about my childhood growing up. And this is a little bit self-indulgent for me. I'm bringing you guys on a walk down memory lane. The nostalgia is real for me today. I'm going to show you the house I spent my first 10, 11 years in. I'm going to show you different areas that I used to play as a kid with my brothers and my cousins. I'm looking forward to seeing how any of you guys can connect with some of the OG Pearl City things that I'm going to drop later. Checked out Foodland Farms for some food. Also got to check out Brother Stewart. He's an OG for my air. It's going to be kind of like our high-low videos, but not really. We definitely are going to touch on some of the currently listed active for sale properties. We're going to talk a little bit about some of the price points that you may see in Pearl City today as well. I am about to get on Camp Highway. I'm going to take you guys to the home that my parents brought me home to after I was born. My baby Luau was there. My first birthday party was there. That's where me and my two brothers were before they both left me and went to college. So I have actually a lot of memories in the Pearl City area and we're gonna just kind of cruise around and see kind of what that stuff looks like I'm sure wildly different so Pearl City is a pretty easy commuter town meaning if you work in downtown Honolulu it's pretty central so Mililani is probably like exactly central but Pearl City is even better for commute Pearl City is a good area to live if you commute to town um, but you don't want to live in town pretty close to Pearl Harbor it's also not that far away from all the other bases so really if you're military and you want to have something in this area this is really convenient as well check out the video where Derek rode the rail so you can see but Pearl City is a good easy uh, kind of station where there's some place to get on the rail pretty easily. Is Mahe missing out? No, I mean, other than, you know, I don't know, Mahe prefers to be on camera. Than I couldn't not. be on the rail. I had to work. Some of us got to work sometimes. Can I just shoot YouTube every day? On Waimana Home Road, when you're going up, there's, you know, the police station is on the left. Uh, we'll pass on the right side as used to be Foodland is now H Mart. Foodland that my brother got banned from. We won't say why. On one of our other videos, we were talking about this. Don Quixote, which previously before that was Dai A, but before it was Dai A, the one here, the Don Quixote in Pro City was a holiday mart. And they called this area like Holiday City. So this road down here, this one takes you to the H1. But there's a house on this road that has like these rainbow pigeons that you could like rent and they, for like events and stuff but you would just sometimes see a like a flock of like rainbow colored pigeons just flying around because the guy would just like set them loose and let them go fly we never were in like upper pro city you know we were kind of on the bottom so we always just kind of like assume that anywhere up there was for rich people i don't know why that's what we thought just single family houses in the area nothing super crazy or fancy none of the houses around us were ever new they kind of look all the same i see a couple of like built up houses like this one right over here actually my auntie diane used to live in this house right here for forever i had a friend from elementary who lived in one of i can't remember exactly which house it was one of these houses this is the little neighborhood that i grew up in it's on Ho'oli circle this whole thing is like a big loop of um, single family homes and i grew up on Ho'oli place which is a cul-de-sac almost kind of at the bottom of the loop of Ho'oli circle this area manana Ho'oli circle Ho'oli place these are all single family homes i just looked up you know it's off market there's not really any houses for sale in here but i just did like a quick uh, valuation online to see what something like this might go for the house that i grew up in online it's saying it's worth like a 1.1 million dollars which to me is crazy growing up i would have never thought this house that i live in is going to be worth a million dollars someday never never ever would have thought that my brain the image of where i grew up is we were all poor kids with tons of aunties uncles cousins everybody all living together and now those houses that we grew up in are worth like a million dollars so wild okay i'm kind of tripping out right now because when we we're coming down this this road i remembered this little park we used to go to which behind it just used to be like i want to say like uh, california grass and all kinds of stuff like it was just a park and you couldn't see anything but now as an adult woman in 2023 i'm walking here and i can already see mcdonald's i can already see all the stuff that's built up over there this is where like tj maxx and all that stuff is down there 
Whoa, crazy. It is nuts to me how built up all the stuff around it is. Now coming here, it's just, there's the public storage is right there. McDonald's is right there. Panda is right there. Walmart is right there. All of that stuff is just right here now. That's crazy to me. All of this was like just a bunch of barefoot kids, dirty kids running around all day, trekking through California grass to get to the industrial park, to places we shouldn't have been. And now if you live in Pro City, look how close you are to everything you could possibly need. That's my farm. Oh, I don't know. I, there's a Foodland Farms yeah. in Pro City. I didn't even realize they built a Foodland Farms, which if you know, is like, the bougie version of Foodland. I am shocked at how good everything looks. This, there's a Okazuya, which is like build your own bento kind. There's pizza, chick this sushi. There's all kinds of stuff in here. Foodland already got that poke game strong. Everybody already knows you can go to any Foodland and get like the best poke in like 13 different varieties. But this is like a new level unlock for me. I did not know that they had this in Pearl City and I will be coming back. Look at this. This is like the localest thing I've ever seen. Lihing pineapple with a lemon with a lihing moi seed in it. If you were sick or if you had a sore throat, if your mom cut a lemon in half and stuck a lihing moi seed in there, that's how you know you're local. They get triangle musubis. I got bit by a dog in that carport there. My first sleepover, I had it at this house over here. And they woke up and thought I went missing or was kidnapped. They came over here, I was just went home because I was scared, so. This little strip here is where Mike, who was our Manapua man, would pull up his van and everybody would kind of come out. What is a Manapua man, you ask? It is a van of usually like an older uncle or something in there who would have uh, different kinds of food, usually fried noodles, usually spam musubis, usually pork ash, which is like a dumpling, a bunch of different snacks, maybe chips, sodas and juices, and sometimes ice cream. So he would come here daily and we just like, you know, pay like a dollar for a bag that had a plastic bag that had fried noodles and two pork hash in it. And then he had like a bottle of shoyu that you could like, soy sauce, shoyu that you could like pour in the bag and walk away. So you'd just be, we'd be eating out of a plastic bag. It was the funniest thing. Oh, he also sold cigarettes. I remember that. That's so funny. You know, you in that area, right? When your Manapua band sells cigarettes, right? Like, but he used to take EBT certificates back when they'd be like printed on tickets that way. If you, if you didn't have money, he would also take EBT. But really, really cool guy he kind of saw all of us grow up and I do remember the last time I was here when I was maybe like 20 years old visiting my cousin who still lived in the cul-de-sac he remembered me just back there is holy place where we were this is like illegal right to go through here but us kids instead of going all the way through Waimana home road and coming all the way back down this way we used to sneak through this gate which is like way more fortified now than it used to be it used to just be like super janky you just pull it apart and go through get in trouble almost every time it's just us like sprinting down trying not to get caught by somebody there used to be this convenience store that sold like some leaking moe crack seed and haw flakes hit me up in the comments if you know what a haw flake is those two twin towers people in pro city call them twin towers um century park plaza that's also where that main station that hub is for getting on the rail too it's not a park and ride but right here down on cam highway by century park plaza there is a kiss and ride meaning you can pull off to the side honey honey give kisses bye bye drop them off to get on the rail and since we're on the topic of century park plaza shout out to our clients we sold one in there before and i also bought one an investment property for one of our clients kevin the most affordable the cheapest piece of real estate in pearl city right now is actually in those buildings in Century Park Plaza. It's a studio. It is 360 square feet and it is now on the market for $275,000. I feel like it's underrated because it, it's not truly like ocean view but it kind of is like you can see all the Pearl Harbor views from there. So the higher you are in the building the better your views are but it's a super easy like spot to get on to cam highway super easy spot to use the public transit system if you're going to use it and there's actually really really nice views depending on which building you're in and which side of the building you're on look the gate opens now there's a fob before it used to just be chain like a chain with a padlock on it now a little fancy now you can fob in and out of this gate i know i'm not trip it but the real estate even just a quarter of a mile up from Ho'oli circle where I was feels different feels different already I was a JPO a junior police officer guarding these corners 
you know, with my staff sign, my crossing guard action. We were the Menehunes, the Manana Elementary Menehunes. Remember, I forced a boy to kiss me over here in kindergarten? I just pushed him against the wall and kissed him. Shout out Kikarabai, if you ever see this. Sorry for the harassment and the bullying, but appreciate you. We were the two tallest kids, so we always got paired together doing everything. Back row for every picture. My mom and dad forgot me one time back in the day. I remember it being dark when they came and get me. I was crying and there were no cell phones back then, so if your parents miscommunicated, you were kind of just shut out of log. Oh my gosh, so many memories. There's tennis courts and basketball courts on the other side of that pool. And I remember I used to bring like a can of Spam, raw Spam as my snack. And I would pop the can, the cover off and use the, the cover from the Spam can to slice it into pieces that I would share with my friends. Like, I don't think it gets more <laughs> like local than that. It, was, it wasn't fine dining. It'd be like a can of Spam and a couple bags of like raw Simon. Simon, top ramen Simon, or you crush it up together and then you sprinkle the little sauce packet in there and you eat it like almost like a bag of chips. You've been in IAL your whole life? Yeah, I grad IAL 86. Oh. Ali all the way. <laughs> <laughs> what do you guys want to know? You tell me what you want to know. Since hey. we get a lot of mainland viewers, yeah. explain the name of your company for us. Okay, so Popolo, best way to explain it, I'll just say this, it's not racist. Yeah. A lot of people in the, in the last 10 years seem to want to make it racist. So. It, the really? word derives, yeah, from the popolo berry. It only grows in the mountains. Mm -hmm. It's a small black berry. Mm -hmm. So when Captain Cook came, he asked the Hawaiians, when he pointed to the dark Hawaiians, he wanted to know, what do you call them? Yeah. They pointed to the popolo berry. Yeah. So that's where it comes from. What do you sell here? <laughs> what you got? I do chicken and chicken only. Chicken that's and chicken I, only. Huli huli chicken. Huli huli. Yeah. If you don't understand, huli huli just means to flip. Yep. Doesn't mean that there's a special sauce on it or anything like that. When we were kids, it used to take a lot of labor to do this. Yeah. Now we cheat and we use a motor. So <laughs> a few other people that do it, the majority of the people use charcoal. I'm one of the only that guys around that um, use keave wood. It's not true huli huli chicken if you're not using keave. Why do people order the most? The whole chicken. whole chicken. Yeah, you cannot beat the price, that's why. Mine is only $14, which is fairly cheap mm -hmm. compared to... You go in the food line, you're gonna pay that for the whole chicken yeah, uncooked. Yeah, right, right, yeah. So you still gotta go home and cook it. Even that, to get a whole chicken plate, that's only $2 more to get it on a plate. That's like a good deal. I actually got a huli huli chicken plate recently, which was not good. It was like the quarter of the chicken. It was $13. The chicken was so small. It was like mostly like rice and, you know, iceberg lettuce salad so this is a deal come check him out if you guys are ever in pearl city and you're looking for a place to come grab some food check brother out popola boys can't miss it van super colorful sticks out when you're driving by that's what caught our eye 13 years come check him out since we got an IAEA grad here and not a lot of people know what what do you what's the difference to you what do you think is the difference between IAEA and pearl city Oh, when we were growing up, there wasn't really any difference. If you got kicked out of one school, you went to the other. <laughs> That's really the only yeah. difference. Yeah. Uh, I grew up like right, none of this was here yeah, at all. all. Yeah, um, yeah. Had the green barracks right here, yep. green army barracks. Yep. Oh, this was all sugar cane. Yeah, this was nothing. We used to ride our bikes to here. This yep. was all sugar cane. So I lived on just the other side in Ho'oli oh, wow. Circle. Really? Like, yep, right over there. When we were young, we used to go to Dark Tunnels. Do you remember Dark, dark tunnels? tunnels? Did you guys, did IAEA kids do that? It was kind of like a river and like a, an underwater. Yeah. It was like a runoff. There was quite a few in this area. Yeah. And then they had one on the backside of Pearl City Industrial. Yep. The waterfalls is still there. Kids still play there. And then Maybe. You know about the bike trails up the. Yep. Yo. Mm -hmm. You're doing real estate. We're in the mainland or here? here? Yeah, oh. here. What do you find is the biggest challenge now? Well, I think it might be a personal challenge for me is being local and there just being um, not as much of an opportunity for local people to buy. No affordable, they don't build one bedroom and two bedroom houses on the island anymore, yeah. which is ridiculous. Yeah. So that building right there is what they call affordable housing. Oh yeah. It's not affordable, because affordable housing is not like Kaka'ako, like they still, it's affordable, but who wants yeah. to live in a condo? From a local's perspective, born and raised in IAEA, 1986 IAEA grad, um, when posed with the question, what is the hardest thing about, you know, Hawaii, living in Hawaii, the real estate in Hawaii, um, from him and from a lot of people, it's that we don't have enough affordable housing. There are a few builds for affordable housing, usually condo buildings and lottery systems. What do you guys think of the, the current state of affairs when it comes to affordable housing in Hawaii? Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh. This smells so good. 
Okay, when I buy Huli Huli chicken, this is what I expect. I expect a chicken in a plastic bag. <laughs> yeah. I don't know about everybody else, but I don't, I don't really want it on a plate. I want my hands dirty and I want to eat it out of a plastic bag. Look at that, guys. Just like the smell. Where this green electrical box is here, there used to be a, a big plumeria tree. Um, and it used to have this one branch that hung and we'd swing. And I remember making mud pies and putting, baking them, you know, uh, playing on that. I don't think you're supposed to do that, but like baking them on that electrical box there. We used to have like a little pool that we'd set up, like a tiny pool like this big. I know there's a sliding door here. That's where I'd go in when I come home from school. What does that say? What does that sign say? Does that say Kahele? The family who lives here now, their last name is one letter off from my last name. That's so crazy. When I was born at Kapiolani Hospital, my mom and dad brought me home here. Um, we didn't leave until it was like time for me to be an intermediate. Uh, we lived here that whole time. The house that I lived in here, it was uh, my grandpa owned it at the time My on my Japanese side, my mom's dad and it was divided into three sections. At one point, like all three sisters were living here with all of our, the kids, with me and my cousins all here. It seems crazy, I can't imagine my kids doing stuff like this nowadays, but when I was growing up, you know, there's the property line and the fence and then just a cane hall road behind and then the hill leads all the way down to like the industrial area. We would like take cardboard boxes or we like found like an old dirty mattress out there because people would dump stuff on the cane road sometimes and we'd slide down that hill and end up down kind of by the industrial area and do like all kinds of wild stuff that I can't even imagine my kids doing these days but you know good old days that's when we kind of just did whatever we wanted outside these street lights used to turn on at like 7 p.m i knew to be home before the street lights were on but if i didn't my dad would stand right in this garage right here he'd put his fingers in his mouth and he'd whistle so loud and that's when i knew i was in trouble for my first birthday for my baby luau they dug the emu that's where they had the whole party we had tables and chairs all in the front and in the back hundreds of people there my dad's friends are all fishers and divers and one owns a bar so they had kegs they had big ceramic bathtubs full of like drinks for everybody i don't think i ever looked at that growing up but you actually do have some like a little bit of malka views over here i found a piece of property for sale just outside the dead end that i grew up on uh, there wasn't a sign but we looked it up we found out there is one actively listed right now right here in ho'oli circle so when we looked up what the approximate valuation of the house i grew up in might be it said somewhere around 1.1 uh, this house listed behind us this is 1281 ho'oli circle it is currently listed for seven hundred sixty nine thousand dollars it is a three bedroom two bath i at first was like oh that's kind of a big gap the difference seven hundred sixty nine thousand versus 1.1 million uh, i was like wow uh, google must be doing me dirty today but when we got here we realized actually that this is an attached duplex so that does make a difference it isn't a detached single family home separate on its own it is an attached duplex attached meaning like you share walls right so there's attached walls there but i'm wondering so there's two mailboxes right there duplex attached they share a wall and only one side of that duplex only one side of the home which is approximately 970 ish square feet that's the part that's for sale and that's why we see kind of that big difference in the price between um when we looked up what the house i grew up in might look like and then this one today it's been on the market for um 260 ish days Give us a call if you have questions about it. So we cruised around in the Ho'oli Circle area, checked out some single family homes, but I also wanted to just pop into this area called Waiau. Not a lot of people know that this area exists. I think Kenji didn't even know that there were this many condos back here. But Waiau is an area that has lots of different little condo complexes. Some of them you can see out through Pearl Harbor. Even from here, you can kind of see we're up at this park in the higher, like a little bit uh, higher in elevation, more on the top of Waiau here, where you can see ocean, Pearl Harbor, all of the flat land below. When I took a look on the MLS today, there are about three active condo listings right now some are three bedroom some are two bedroom and it depends what condo complex you're in but all of the ones that are actively listed in this neighborhood right now are in the 600 thousands 620 ish was around the average price for a condo that's available right now here in Waiau. so i 
showed one just down the hill here which was actually really nice newly renovated none of these are brand new buildings these are all kind of you know older hawaii buildings completely flipped on the inside did all new interior new vinyl plank flooring um, freshly painted walls renovated the kitchen and the baths and at the time that was in the high 600s i don't know what it closed for but it was actually super nice they had a balcony lanai on the makai so ocean side of the condo unit which was actually really nice and because of the way that Waiau was sort of terraced up this way when you're up here you can see the tops of that building and then so on and so forth the way that it's terraced that building actually you had a really really nice view all the way down to the, the ocean so I think that's why it was able to list for as high as it did view makes difference here for sure but keep in mind when we say ocean view it's not the same as like a Lanikai ocean view it is Pearl Harbor but the ocean is the ocean. Any view of the ocean is going to come with a little bit more of a premium. HawaiiHomeValue.com For sellers, or you know what? Just for refinancers, for homeowners. Oh, you want to sell in a year from now, it's better to understand your home's value today. My friend lived there, sold her house during the pandemic, got her a house down the street off market so that auntie, 95 years old, could live in the home on the first floor. The good news is we're able to reposition into something that she got for probably $100,000 under value. MyHawaiiHomeValue.com my name is Derek Okahashi. My team is called Core Team Hawaii. I'm just obsessed with this stuff. I love real estate. Uh, I love talking about it. I love helping. So please, please hit us up. For like you OG Pearl City people, Kenji and I were talking about how he used to play in that river down there, which I did as well. But who remembers, anybody from like old, old time Pearl City, who remembers, did you go to a place called Dark Tunnels, which was like a pipe like this, you're, you kind of go through. The water would like rise anytime it would be you know super rainy or stormy we'd be down there of course without permission but who was who was watching us you know our parents back in the day our parents went to work and we just did whatever right but i remember walking or swimming through there and it'd be like this high and now as a parent when i think about it i'm like oh my god if that rain if that like rush of water came down from a heavy rain we could have all drowned so thank you to all of our guardian angels for looking out for us when we were in dark tunnels in pro city let me know in the comments if you know what I'm talking about.